We're just starting the next permutation of little kitty land. I haven't had much time to do videos lately. I've been busy herding kittens. But as you can see, they certainly are growing fast. This is Loki. Just starting to interact with toys. They're not using the litter boxes yet, but they will. And Lakota over here has actually actually ate out of the dish this morning by herself. All three have nibbled food off of my fingers. And these kittens are between three and four weeks old now. Livingston's sound asleep over there. I just now put in the main litter box, which they will train in, which has the lid on it. I was asked to do sort of an informative video on stuff. <laughs> this is all off the wall, so it'll probably be like all over the map kind of kind of thing. But every breeder does does things differently, and of course, if you just have the luxury of one litter at a time, it certainly simplifies things. In any case, they stay in the nest until they're about three weeks old, and then I introduce them to the corral. And they'll stay in the corral until they're five weeks old, or litter box trained. Usually they'll be litter box trained by, the, by five weeks. And by litter box training, I mean that you just enclose them with the box and they generally start using it with very little encouragement. I was also asked about uh, the mother healing after the birth. That's in a healthy birth. It's not an issue. As you can see, here's Sitka. <laughs> they do just fine. There's, there's no healing thing. Um, special food for the queen? No. I don't believe in special food for the queen. I believe in special food for everybody. So if you feed your queen, if you take care of your queen, she'll take care of her babies. That's my theory in any case. So all of the cats are on what I consider best possible diet. Now Persians in the wild, we all know about Persians in the wild, right? Uh, in any case, Persians in the wild would um, wean their kittens right on to the food that they were eating and they wouldn't have anything special. I don't know when the last time there was a Persian in the wild. Probably never. <laughs> in any case, these kittens are weaned right on to the food that mom is eating. And so I actually start feeding mom in the, the corral and, and the kittens will watch her and learn. And I encourage them with my fingers a little bit, let them nibble off of my fingers. And as you can see, these kittens are lucky to have a triple nanny. And like I, I think I said before, probably the only kittens in the world that have a triple nanny. <laughs> she has her own methods, as you can see. Livingston's snoozing. <laughs> these kittens are all doing well. Livingston's the biggest. L Lakota here is the smallest, but Lakota is also the most adventuresome. She does everything first. to think of my talking points. In any case, uh, no special diet, no vitamins or anything for the mother. I will usually feed her in the nest for the first few days or, or however long because the mothers are reluctant to leave the kittens uh, when they're newborns and then as they grow up the mothers become more and more independent of the kittens. They're very smart. Isn't that right, Loki? And I mean Lakota. This is Lakota. Yeah, you're a smart little girl.
<laughs> yeah. Loki. Loki purred this morning. She's the first kitten to purr. Livingston's getting a little bit of attention from from Nanny. Nanny Tribble. My first litter of kittens, which was in 2005, I set out to wean them by the book. I read everything. I read it all. How you're supposed to do it. You make a glop. They call it glop. It's sort of a cross between. It, d it depends on, you know, different breeders make different glops. It could be whatever. Um, some, some of them make their homemade stuff to transition a kitten from milk to solid food. And I got all of my little stuff out, the little plates and little spatula things and fingers and I don't know. I d really didn't know what I was doing. I had four kittens. <laughs> Pretty soon I had glop and goop all over my hands and all over the kittens and all over the floor. And that's the last time I weaned kittens. Really, I I said, okay, you guys are on your own. That's it, I've had enough. And from then on, I just dip my fingers in, the fo in mom's food and they start nibbling it off my fingers with great enthusiasm sometimes, which is interesting when their teeth start to come in. Yeah. Then I lead them over to the plate. I feed them on nice flat little plates. They're, the biggest issue is them getting the edge of the plate kind of confused. They don't know between the plate and what's the difference between the plate and the food. How would a kitten know these things? I put a little bit of litter out the minute they start to wobble out of the nest. They don't use it, but they wander through it. And they'll start using it, um, you know, they'll just start eating some solid food, so they'll probably start using the litter maybe late this week or early next. And generally, they'll just start using it. Sometimes a little encouragement from me, but not much. I usually salt the litter with some uh, some clumps from from their mom's litter box. The covered litter box, a lot of um, there's a lot of theories about kittens using the same litter as the mother cat. And I'm sure that they're valid theories, but I just have never worried about that. The only reason I have it covered is because mom makes a mess out of it. So they can go through their little holes here. But until they're used to popping in and out of those holes, which of course kittens love to do once they discover it, they'll have this little tray here. I'll take this little tray out as soon as they're using the big box reliably. And then at about five weeks, when they're using the box with no mistakes, and then generally with this method, I just don't seem to have any mistakes. You know, I mean, that's a kind of a thing that you don't dare say because you could be proven wrong real quick. Yeah, isn't that right? In any case, the idea is to not allow them to make mistakes in a big area at least, and then then you won't have any trouble. I mean, you'll have them dragging stuff out of the box, and you'll have them with messy little butts and stuff like that, but you won't have them not using the box like they're supposed to. Okay, Mariah, you are just a... <laughs> she has her own methods, don't you? Okay, well, is that, an, that was probably an appropriately disorganized little thing. Yes. And they all get, uh, of course, their vet visit and all of that sort of stuff when they're a bit older, usually about nine weeks old. Yes, you guys are so cute. And Livingston, let's just go stir him up a little bit before we conclude this video. He's a cute little guy. He, He's snoozing right now. 
he seems big compared to the others. But I compared weights to one of Tiny Bear's litters at this age, and her kittens were actually larger. Come here, wake up. Wake up, little boy. He says, doesn't want to wake up. I'm not going to wake up. No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> In the meantime, the girls are being lively here. They'll wake up when they're trying to sleep. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, there's such goings on. Yeah, they're, just, they're starting to play with each other just a tiny little bit. Um, not too much with the toys, but soon. Real soon. Okay. <laughs>